Hello and welcome to this brief tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to explain to you how to use Google Drawing. Right now I'm inside Google Drive. I'm hoping that you know how to get to Google Drive. You can always go to drive.google.com in order to get there. If you're in Google Chrome, over in the top left, you might have this little button. And if you have that button, then you'll notice that Google Drive is located right here. This is another pathway that you can use in order to get to Google Drive. Inside Google Drive, I'm just inside of a sample folder. And my recommendation is to go into a specific folder and then create your project in that space, if that's your objective. Um, if the students are working in Google Classroom, I can show you a way more efficient way to do that. That would be the student pathway. Uh, you as the educator, if you want to design one for any purpose, my recommendation is just to start here in Google Drive. I scooted over to Google Classroom super quickly just to show you that if you want your students to start from scratch a blank project with nothing on it, you can easily have them scoot into the assignment that you have created for them and on the right hand side it says add or create. I'm going to click add or create one time and then I'm going to scoot right down here where to where it says drawings and by clicking one time Google is going to design a brand new drawing with my name on it with this assignment title on it so that I can complete the objectives that the teacher has created for me and you the teacher can easily find that resource inside the folder for Google Classroom. The objective of this quick tutorial is not the ins and outs of Google Classroom. I just wanted to tuck this little piece in here so that you know how your students can easily get to Google Drawing if you've already created an assignment. So for the students, this is the pathway that they would take. I'm going to scoot back over here to my sample folder inside Google Drawing and I'm going to show you, the teacher, how you would create one if you need to design one. So right here, new followed by more, followed by Google Drawings. Now your students can follow this same pathway as well. They can go to Google Drive, they can create a specific folder, maybe it's their science folder, or their math folder, or their ELA folder, or whatever it is, and then they can go through all of these processes to start a new project. So here I am starting fresh. Over here on the left hand side it says Untitled Drawing. I'm going to click inside of this box one time in order to rename this project and I already have Mary Poppins in the adjacent tab but I'm going to stick on that same theme. Okay, so what is the author's point of view or better yet, what would be a specific theme that I can extract from the narrative? So I'm going to build a background color. In addition to a background color, I'm going to show you how to bring in a picture. I'm going to crop or edit some of those items. I'm also going to bring in text. This tutorial will go fairly quickly. Uh, my desire is for it to not be 30 minutes long. I'm going to try to move fairly quickly. You can always click pause if I'm moving too quickly so that you can repeat some of those tasks over again. Down in the bottom right corner of this frame or space, I'll call it a canvas, you'll notice that there are a few lines down there in that corner. This gives you the power and the freedom to easily readjust the size of your canvas simply by clicking on those lines. You'll notice how my pointer turned into a two-headed arrow. I'm going to click down on my mouse button, I'm going to leave that down, and then I'm going to scoot over. You'll notice how the perimeter is changing as I move. The minute I lift my index finger, the canvas is going to readjust to that size. That is a very quick and efficient way to adjust your canvas size if that's important to you. At first you might be perplexed that you see white and gray boxes in the back. From a design perspective, the software is letting the user know that there is absolutely nothing on this canvas. Sometimes when we have a design of some kind 
and we want that design to show up somewhere but we want all the space around it to be blank this is what we're saying from a design perspective because if we file download as a png file what we're doing is we're getting rid of everything that is not the actual design that we created so when you download it it won't be the entire perimeter of the canvas it will be this particular item that is filled with color everything else will be see-through that's the purpose of those squares in the background all right so let's move on to creating a color in the back I used my mouse, I used the right click button, and when I did that, this menu appeared. I'm going to choose background. When I choose background, I can choose solid or gradient. I can also choose custom because I want the color to be slightly different from all the options that I see in front of me. Or the last option is transparent. I'm going to choose a soft background, nothing that's too vivid, that, that way I have some fairly decent um, contrast when I bring other items in. Step number two, I'm gonna come over here to the box that has the letter T inside of it. And when I choose that letter T, you'll notice how my arrow is now a plus symbol. I'm going to click in one space. I'm going to leave my mouse button down. I'm gonna slide down to the bottom corner, not like the far bottom corner, but uh, an adjacent space. And then I'm going to lift. It's somewhat irrelevant the size that I created because it's going to snap it into a smaller size. So don't be discouraged when that happens. And the item that I clicked represented a text box. If you didn't notice up along the top, the toolbar has completely changed. All of the features up here are specific to text. So if I want it bold, italicized, underlined, if I want the color to change, if I want it highlighted, those sorts of things. So in the context of Mary Poppins, we notice that Mary Poppins has a very delightful or pleasant disposition and her pleasant disposition influences the people around her. So I'm going to say a happy disposition can impact those around you cute little bumper sticker that you could design after watching that entire narrative. Using my keyboard, I'm going to hold the control button down. I'm going to touch the letter A for Apple or A for all. A shadow has been placed along this text so I can make adjustments. I can take my mouse over to the plus symbol right here next to the number 14 and I can scoot, scoot, scoot the size of that font up. The other option I tend to enjoy keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna hold my control button down with my left pinky. I'm gonna use my ring finger to hold the shift button down. I'm gonna use my right hand to use the open uh, angle bracket. If you have no clue what I'm talking about or you don't enjoy that, you do not have to use this strategy. It's the strategy that I gravitate to the most in order to increase or decrease font size easily. I can also use the left angle bracket uh, and then it, the, it would resize the text incrementally as well. So 25, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You'll see how it adjusts seamlessly. You can achieve that very same thing by using your mouse, whichever is most efficient for you. Let me highlight just a few more characteristics before this video closes. I'm going to change the font style. In order to do that, you must illuminate or cast a shadow on the text. So let me go ahead and do that. And then right here, you can see this little down facing triangle, and that will give you a host of different font strategies. So feel free to scoot through those and find one that is specific to what you want to achieve for this project. After you have utilized that strategy, bold, italicized, and underline are also characteristics. You can diversify what characteristics are bold and what characteristics are not bold. So if there's a specific vocabulary word that's important, or if you want to even offset it with a different font strategy, 
then those characteristics and strategies are available to you. There are additional videos in this series. Please join me for the next video.